boys and girls, and welcome to the Kids Spot. Today, I want to talk to you about your neighbor. Who comes to your mind when I say that word? Your neighbor. Well, of course, I think about my fabulous street of green acres when I think about the word neighbor. I have many friends who live from the beginning of the street to the end of the street that I can count on to help me when I'm in need. If I need a cup of sugar to add to something for dinner, or if Hudson or Hazel need someone to play with, there's usually someone on the street who's around. This came in especially handy when we were all shut down because of the virus. We spent a lot of time with our neighbors during that time. But you know, in the Bible, God tells us that really our neighbor is not just the person who lives next door to you. Your neighbor can be anyone. It can be someone you go to school with, um, someone who is related to you, your family member. It can be the random person in the grocery store that you pass at the checkout. A neighbor can be anyone. Now the important thing about this, boys and girls, is that we not just only need to know that we have neighbors, we need to understand that God calls us to love our neighbor, to help our neighbor when they need it, to show them kindness, to show them friendship, to show them love. Back a while ago when I first started working here at the church, someone gave me a copy of a really awesome book. It's called, Who is My Neighbor? And I have it right down in my office. I forgot to bring it to the kids' spot today. But in this next clip, you're going to listen to the story. You're going to see the pictures. And I want you to listen especially for the message that the story gives, because it goes right along with today's Bible story. If you were here for Wednesday night a few weeks ago, you heard this story. Your teacher shared it with you. If you're hearing it for the second time, I challenge you to listen and see if you learn anything new. It's called, Who is My Neighbor? And I can't wait for you to hear it. Today's story is, Who is My Neighbor? by Amy Jill Levine and Sandy Eisenberg Sasso. Illustrated by Denise Turo. Once there was a town where only blues lived. There were navy and indigo, aqua and sapphire, powder blue and midnight blue. They planted irises and forget-me-nots and feasted on blueberries and blue cheese. They sailed on blue waters. Blue jays perched on branches and brilliant blue cracker butterflies shimmered. The blues thought they were the coolest colors. The yellows lived in a different town. There were gold and bronze, lemon and mustard, canary and pale yellow. They planted sunflowers and daffodils and feasted on bananas and butterscotch pudding. They traveled on yellow brick roads. Goldfinches perched on branches and busy yellow jackets buzzed. The yellows thought they were the hottest colors. The blues and the yellows did not like one another very much. Be careful of the yellows. We are better than they are. They are not our neighbors. They warned their children not to go near the others. Be careful of the blues. We are better than they are. They are not our neighbors. For years, the blues said, there was no such thing as a good yellow. And the yellow said, 
There was no such thing as a good blue. One day, Midnight Blue put on his best blue helmet and got on his blue bike. He loved cruising under the bright blue sky and passing by the tranquil blue lakes, singing a bluegrass tune. Then, out of the blue, someone passed by so close to Midnight Blue that he lost his balance. Bump, thump. Midnight Blue tumbled to the ground. His knees started to turn black and blue. Midnight Blue needed help. Along came Navy. Navy will help me, Midnight Blue thought. But Navy was afraid. She wondered, maybe someone made Midnight Blue fall and maybe that person is still around. So Navy pretended not to notice Midnight Blue. Midnight Blue was surprised. Why hadn't Navy stopped to help? After all, Navy was his neighbor. Along came Powder Blue. Powder Blue will help me, Midnight Blue thought. But Powder Blue wondered, did Midnight Blue get in a fight? Is the other person still around? He was afraid, so he pretended not to notice Midnight Blue. Midnight Blue was surprised. Why hadn't Powder Blue stopped either? After all, Powder Blue was his neighbor. Neither Navy nor Powder Blue is true blue. Along came Lemon. Oh no, a yellow! thought Midnight Blue. A yellow will only make things worse. Maybe this yellow will steal my books. But Midnight Blue wasn't the only one who was scared. Lemon worried about helping a blue. What if that blue wanted to trick her? What if that blue jumped up and took her bike? Maybe she should just hurry by. But Lemon didn't hurry by. She decided to help. She didn't steal his books. She picked them up. She lifted Midnight Blue from the dirt, handed him his helmet, and helped him get on the back of her bike. Then she took him to her doctor. While they waited, Lemon gave Midnight Blue a butterscotch cookie. It was broken, but still delicious. Midnight Blue said, You're a good yellow, not like the others. Most yellows are good, Lemon said. So are most blues, Midnight Blue said, and he smiled. He pulled out a small bag of blueberries and gave some to Lemon. They were a little squishy, but still yummy. When Dr. Gold came out, Midnight Blue was still a bit frightened. Dr. Gold was another yellow, but Dr. Gold smiled at him. She shined a light into his eyes, checked to make sure nothing was broken, and put a bandage on each knee, good as gold. Midnight Blue turned to Lemon and said, Thank you for helping me. I would like to be your friend. Lemon nodded, Of course. A good friend. When Midnight Blue returned to his town, he told all the blues what had happened. It was not at all what they expected to hear. He said, Lemon did not pass by. Lemon did not look the other way. Lemon helped, and Dr. Gold did too. The blues thought, The yellows do not look like us or eat the same foods, but maybe the yellows can be our friends. When Lemon returned to her town, she told all the yellows what had happened. It was not at all what they expected to hear. She said Midnight Blue wasn't mean at all. He was thankful. He shared his blueberries, so sweet. From now on, we are going to be friends. The yellows thought, 
the blues do not know our songs or grow our plants, but maybe we can help the blues and the blues can help us. From that time on, the blues and the yellows began to say, maybe we don't have to look alike or even live nearby. Perhaps we will like hearing new songs and tasting new foods. We might like making new friends. Maybe we can all help one another. Maybe, said Midnight Blue. Lemon smiled. Maybe, just maybe. Thanks for watching Storytime with Miss Rose. If you liked the video, make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell for more videos. Don't forget to hit the like button and leave a comment down below. If you enjoyed the book, there's a link to purchase in the description below. Thank you. Wow! I hope you enjoyed that awesome story, boys and girls. I knew the first time I heard that story that I had to get a copy of that book for us to use here at the church because it paints such a good picture of how God calls us to love our neighbor. Today we're going to talk all about that in the kids' spot, how to be a good neighbor, and we're going to look at a really familiar Bible story that I'm sure you've heard before. But before we get to that, I hope you will join me in our first song. It's called, God is Good. So get up, dance, and sing with me.
Good morning, Theo. How are you today? Well, I'm doing great, but my best friend Ralph is not doing so great. Oh, no, Theo. What happened to Ralph? Well, the other night we had a soccer game. Ralph was playing great and had already scored two goals. But in the second half, he took a hard hit to the paw, and he couldn't play the rest of the game. Oh, no. Poor Ralph. Luckily, my mom had some Band-Aids with her. She helped him on the sidelines. Someone else brought some ice from their cooler. I think he will be better really soon. Oh, Theo, I sure hope so. It sounds like he had a lot of good neighbors that came to help him. That is what we are talking all about today. Want to hear a story about how someone else helped someone in need? Sure! Today, boys and girls, we take a look at a story we all know very well. I want to start by asking you this question. Has there ever been a time when you got hurt? I hope there's never been a time when you've gotten hurt very badly. But I know in my house there are plenty of afternoons where we have skint elbows or knees from playing in the driveway. Who helps you when you get hurt like that? If I had to guess, it's probably your mom or your dad. Maybe a babysitter that's watching you. And they're there to wipe away when you get those bloody knees and apply those extra special band-aids when you need it. That's being a neighbor. That's showing that you love and care someone when they're hurt. You know, no matter who it is, they're able to show you that love. Today we take a look at a story of a man who was willing to do just that. A man who stops and helps after several people pass on by and ignore the man who is hurt on the side of the road. As I've told you before, boys and girls, it's important to point out that this person was a Samaritan. Back during this time, the Samaritans and the Jews did not get along. In fact, they stayed as far apart as they possibly could. But this man looks beyond, beyond this man's looks or who he is, and he's willing to stop and help because it's the right thing to do. So I'm going to read you the story of the Good Samaritan. It comes to us from the book of Luke, chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. Help! A Jewish man shouted from a ditch beside a road in Jericho. Someone help! I've been robbed. The man lay on the ground, hurt and afraid. He was a long way from home. Crunch, crunch. What's that? He wondered. The man oh, lifted his head to see a priest walking toward him. Certainly this temple leader would stop and help. But the priest hurried away, pretending not to see him. Wait! The man whimpered. Don't go! Just then, he heard footsteps from the other direction. Turning his head, he spotted the dark robes of a Levite, someone who knew God's laws. Please help me! The hurt man yelled. The Levite shook his head and ran away. Will anyone help me? The hurt man gasped. He closed his eyes and began to cry. Stomp, stomp. The man's eyes flew open at the sound. A donkey stared down at him. Beside the donkey, the face of a Samaritan man appeared. 
The Jewish man shook in fear. Jewish people and Samaritans did not like each other. Would this hurt this man hurt him too? The Samaritan did not do that. Instead, he helped the man. He cleaned and bandaged the man's wounds, then gently lifted the injured man onto his donkey and started down the dusty road. Knock, knock. The Samaritan rapped on the door of the first inn they found. This man is injured, he told the innkeeper. Let him stay here until he is well. I will pay for everything. The injured man's eyes opened wide with surprise. The Samaritan helped him inside and left. Who was that? asked the innkeeper. The hurt man whispered, He is my neighbor. The good Samaritan helped the man, boys and girls. He bandaged his wounds. He not only gave him a band-aid, but he helped him up, put him on his donkey, and took him to the first hotel he could find so that the man would have a safe place to recover until he was well enough to go home again. We have to remember, boys and girls, that God calls us to love our neighbor. That includes people who are different from us. People who don't look exactly like we do. People who believe different things from us. Because God calls us to love everyone, no matter what. And if they're hurt or they're in need, we are to be God's hands and feet and help those people. So I challenge you to do that this week, boys and girls. Are there ways that you can help friends or family this week, if they're hurt, or maybe they're not hurt, maybe they just need a friend. Maybe they need something picked up off the floor. How can you be like the Good Samaritan? How can you show kindness when it's maybe not the easiest thing to do? I challenge you this week to do just that. Let's pray. Dear God, I thank you so much for this church and for the boys and girls who fill it. Dear God, help us this week as we're out in our community to remember that all of the people around us are our neighbors. They were all created by you. They are all loved by you. And so we are to love them too. Help us to reach out to those who might need our help this week. Help us to be brave and help us to show your love and kindness. In your name I pray, amen. You know, boys and girls, after thinking about today's story, it makes me so glad that we serve a God who is so much bigger than we can ever imagine. He is always there for us and he's always able to help us and to help us love and make a difference in our community. So that's why I chose this next song. It has me thinking about our God and how great he is. And that's the name of it. How great is our God? So let's think, sing about this God that we serve, boys and girls, who is so much bigger than we can ever imagine. Okay, boys and girls, now it's craft time. In the email I shared with your parents today, I have a really cool printout that you can print. It's a paper that includes band-aids all around as the border. Now first you can start by coloring those band-aids. And next, in the middle, I challenge you to draw a picture of yourself and someone that you've either helped in the past or someone that God has brought to your mind that you could help in the future. I hope you'll work on that today, boys and girls. Don't forget, boys and girls, that God blesses us all. And that means you, and that means me. So I challenge you today, boys and girls, to use what you've learned here in the Kids Spot and go and make a difference in the world. I'll see you back here in the Kids Spot again next week 
for another episode. Until then, I hope you have a fantastic week. Bye-bye.